This is our PowerPoint on Smokey the Bear, the enemy of the forest. Yes, he is responsible for the burning of Yellowstone National Park in 1988. So who is Smokey the Bear? Smokey is actually a bear that was found in a forest fire in New Mexico in 1950. And he was uh, hanging onto a tree during a forest fire and a firefighter got him and named him Hotfoot and he needed to be nursed back to health and that's what they did with this little bear and after a while they took him to the National Zoo in Washington DC and he got healed and they you can see they put a sign up that said only you can prevent forest fires and the National Forest Service decided that he would be a great mascot to represent their firefighting campaign and so they named him Smokey Bear and so this little hot foot from New Mexico became the Smokey the Bear that everybody came to the zoo to visit and his motto again only you can prevent forest fires so what's the problem with that why is Smokey our culprit here well, the problem is that fire is part of the natural landscape we learned in our succession unit that it is necessary in some ecosystems and in fact especially in the United States we have quite a few ecosystems that are reliant on fires the prairies and grasslands obviously we talked about as well as the chaparral but also the sequoia forests in California and even the uh, the pine forests that are in Wyoming and Montana where Yellowstone National Park is and so what is fire so good for well fire is great because it returns those nutrients to the soil the fires that uh, the United States ecosystems adapted to were natural fires they usually started from lightning in dry conditions which is again quite typical in those areas of the US but when the Europeans got here, they weren't used to a fire adapted um, ecosystem. So this friendly fire mentality was completely erased from, from history. And they did what they thought normal sane people would do. They stopped the fires. And so this idea of fire suppression became the norm, especially towards the early 1900s which is when we had a lot of our national parks established the whole idea was no we can't let the fires burn they'll burn down the trees and so we stopped these nice friendly fires US Forest Service made campaigns like the Smokey the Bear campaign that would stop forest fires and again this led to some problems because the ecosystem wanted fire we got succession when we should not have Remember that succession is going to restart anytime you've got a disturbance, and this is going to be a secondary succession type of restart because we have the soil and we have the seeds. And instead, we kept succession progressing instead of restarting it every 10 to 15 years. This also led to a big problem because it allowed underbrush and leaves and fallen logs to build up, which led to more intense fires. Fires, again, are supposed to be here and they burn off the, the leaf litter and they keep all the next fires very low and controllable. But when you have a lot of kindling underneath, you're going to get some really big fires. So again, a little recap of succession in case you've forgotten. It's the change over time of an ecosystem where species are replaced by more complex communities of organisms. It can happen naturally after a disaster or be forced by man. So we have some natural forest fires. We also have some human caused fires in the forest. But again, these ecosystems are used to it and they even need it. So what type of succession occurs after a fire? I already told you guys, you know it, it's secondary. Secondary starts with soil. So again, these old fires were our friendly fires. They were surface fires and they only burned the leaf litter, the dead stuff that had accumulated, maybe some of the underbrush. And this is a great picture. You can see that the flames are not getting very tall. They're staying on the ground and, and they're burning up the things that are on the ground. You might have some young trees that won't make it, but as a community, it's not gonna get through the bark of the mature trees, which means that your habitat will be intact and all of those nutrients get returned back to the soil.
So not only were the plants and animals used to it, some of them even need it. And this is what we'll look at when we go and do our wildfire demo. Certain pine species have cones that will not open and they will not then drop their seeds unless they are heated by a fire. And some animal species are adapted to only live in disturbed environments. And so when you suppress the fires, you mess with the balance of the species. You get the pines not growing that should be, and you get the animals leaving that need that disturbed environment. And so this was quite a problem in a lot of our forested areas where we had unnatural succession occurring, but we thought that that was how things were supposed to go, right? Because fires are bad. Well, now fires are bad. And so this new kind of fire had so much kindling and so much uh, detritus or leaf litter built up that any time you had a potential for a burn, it was going to burn and it was going to burn for a long time. And that meant that the wood in the trees would dry out and then the fire was able to go up the bark and into the crown of the trees. You'll notice that pine trees don't tend to have lower branches and some of that is because of the natural fires that could occur um, but also it's because they they want to reach up for the sun and protect themselves and so that nice thick bark at the bottom doesn't let the fire through they've got nice um, xylem and phloem they got all that moisture on the inside of that wood but we've gone ahead and let the fire burn for so long that it dries it out and then it becomes its own kindling. And so the tree goes up. This is called a crown fire because it gets to the crown of the tree, the top of the tree. So we've got our surface fires and our crown fires. Surface fires are the good old fires. Crown fires are the bad new fires. Again, these were much more intense. Uh, we stopped the fires from burning and so we had lots and lots of fuel build up and you can see from this picture this is going to be devastating to this forested area and to all the animals. It's also going to burn so quickly that some of those animals that live there would not be able to escape where they could from a surface fire because it moves a lot slower. It took the devastating fire in 1988 in Yellowstone to teach us this lesson about these fires. And this picture is from shortly after uh, the fire of 1988. And that year was the uh, driest on record in the park. So we had drought conditions and you had some lightning fires and some man started fires, uh, whether they were campfires that weren't put out or cigarettes that were left burning on the side of the road. Um, there were multiple fires that took over in the park. At first, people thought that Yellowstone was destroyed, but after just really a few weeks, there were signs of new life. And after years, the park looked like it was really recovering quite well. And in this picture, you can see the dead trees um, that are very, very tall, but you can see the new growth coming in. And it's, again, very lush, and, and it's what is supposed to be taking place. It shouldn't have occurred on this scale, but when the fire did start and it was not containable, the park rangers knew that this had to happen to restart a good ecosystem and a good community. They got a lot of flack from it from the, the public who thought that they let the park burn, um, but they ultimately knew what was right. So if we look at what Yellowstone looks like now, um, there's, there's very little trace of the fires. You still will see some large standing burned trees, uh, although it's been years now and so those are, are coming down. But again, the park has not been destroyed. The park has regrown. Species have come back and um, it's again our, a very unique ecosystem. So this new forest management technique is to let the forest park rangers decide when to let the wildfires burn. We don't want a fire to burn if it's too dry or if it's too windy because those things are going to spread the fire too quickly and let it grow out of control. But if it's the right time, if the conditions look good, they will let a fire burn, whether it is a wildfire or or some other cause, um, but it can be a good thing. And, and so if a fire starts, they will use their best discretion to figure out if they should try to put it out right away. Again, mostly we hear about these in the summer though, when they should be put out 
immediately. Some fires are set intentionally so that this won't happen in the future. And we call this a prescribed burn. So just like you get a prescription from a doctor, the prescription here is burn the litter, burn the detritus. That's going to stimulate growth by releasing nutrients. It's going to open up certain seeds, like the seeds of the pine cones. And ultimately what, what happens is the correct succession, and we do not face the loss of buildings, the loss of human life, and the loss of ecosystems that occurs from a larger fire that's out of control. And you can see these workers and they go along with a kerosene can and they simply follow the guidelines set by the managers of where to set the fire so that the fire will burn into itself and, and be self-contained. But by doing this again, they've really helped to control the amount of wildfires that we face in the U.S. So some words that you should know, again, our surface fires are the old kind, the good kind. They happen every few years. They just burn off the low stuff. You might see some burned marks on the trees, but the trees are still alive. Crown fire gets all the way up into the tops of the tree, and once that happens, the photosynthesis potential is gone and the trees will die. Cero, oh, I always struggle with this word, serotinus. These are the cones that only open up when they have been exposed to fire. Again, usually this is a pine cone seed, but it, it could be another system of delayed opening of a seed. So it remains closed until the heat from the fire melts this resin that, that's containing it and releases the seed. Not all trees of one species have the same serotiny. It depends on the location and the adaption. And so what we, we find with our lab is that we tend to get um, cones that are from the top of the tree because those are the ones that are most typically adapted to be fire ready. Um, they'll, they'll come down only when the conditions are right, when they've been warmed up enough, and so we, we tend to even see a difference within the same tree. But a tree that grows in California might be adapted to fire where a tree that grows in Illinois, even though they're the same species, might not be adapted to fire. And so you have to remember that too, that there, there are differences within the species. So what about poor old Smokey, who I accused of starting this fire? He is still the mascot of the Forest Service, but now he is appropriately targeting fires that are started by neglectful people. So it's really more about making sure you put out the fires that you start at your campsite and not just a fire prevention thing. Really not a lot's changed with Smokey the Bear, um, but it was that fire prevention and, and scared nature of European influence um, that got us into this mess. And so a, a further look can be taken at the SmokeyBear.com website. It's got some interesting things there, looking at the campaign of the Forest Service in World War II even some of their campaigning they did with the Disney Corporation after the movie Bambi came out. But the interesting things about World War II that you'll find is there's this big push that forest fires are the work of the Nazis because they were trying to burn down our trees so we couldn't make ships. There's some really interesting stuff. And then you can even look at more of the ad campaigns as they go on. And there's some pretty funny little commercials there with Smokey the Bear. Um, we, we might have time on the day of the wildfire demo to show those to you guys. But if you wanted to take a look, the website is listed right there, smokybear.com. And that will take you to, uh, to see all things Smokey the Bear.